the latest. It's funny the the draft and the the area in which the draft was held. Your two Super Bowl parades were kind of a dry run for everybody in the NFL. You know, to get all the fans there and that and that and that spot where the draft hall was. And I saw all the fifteen jerseys around, and that's what you want when you're drafting a quarterback. That's what everybody's dreaming of. And I know there's just one Mahomes. But I'm just wondering, um, as we're all trying to crack the code in the NFL and observers about why the quarterback position is so difficult to evaluate, why, why, why did you land on Mahomes all those years ago now that we're seeing a record number of quarterbacks drafted in a draft? I, I just want to unload that for a minute, Andy. What did you see in him that you yeah, thought, that's the Rich, guy? So, yeah, so Brett was responsible for – looking at him and he was a scout at the time and he brought from the first time he saw me brought Dorsey and I the tape he says you got you got to see this kid I mean he's he's unbelievable he's the best I've ever seen I mean he literally said that and he had that whole southeast region um, of the country and and so he you know he's that's kind of the hotbed that's where there's so many good players that come out of that area and so then he bombarded us with that for a couple of years and um, with the, with these tapes. And he just, you know, by the time we, by the time we brought him in and had a chance to meet him, we felt like we already knew him, you know, and, and, uh, and that was, uh, I mean, it was just one of those deals. He saw him and liked him. And then Dorsey and I were both, John and I were both around Favre and we saw some similarities there. I mean, the way he kind of plays like he's in the backyard and, uh, you know, he just has fun doing it. And and so there were some similarities there that way. And we, we were both uh, attached to him. John did all the work of moving up to get him. But, um, you know, I, I tell you, Brett was the one that had first eyes on. Do you think he would have turned into the guy he turned into if he had to play week one, day one? Andy, you know, I he might have. I mean, who knows? Uh, I I just I've had so much uh, luck with uh, just um, working the guys, kind of easing them in and getting them used to some of the blitz game that the, these these coordinators come up with. I mean, we got so many smart guys on that defensive side that, um, that that come up with all these different looks, and when they when they see a rookie man, they're they're drooling, and so you. It gives you an opportunity just to buy a little time there to get him used to. And I, we had Alex Smith, mm-hmm. and Alex is a heck of a football player. And I just listen. I thought it was best that that he just we took our time with him. Yeah, and and, and clearly you see what he is now. So, uh, what, is there anything he can improve upon, Andy? For real, like uh, it just yeah. Uh, what like what? Can you give me a well, for instance? Yeah, the, it's funny because quarterbacks are like farmers. I mean, the work's never done. You, you've always, you, there's always something you can work on. <clears throat> and I mean, it's small stuff now, uh, you know, whether, whatever, I mean, whether it's dealing with footwork or ball placement or whatever, I mean, there's always something to work on. And, and so he does that and he wants to do that. I mean, he wants to know what we see, what we can give him to make him even greater than he already is. Well, can you give me an example, Andy, from your perspective of his competitive level? Um, you know, the conversation certainly coming off of this championship season places him on, you know, the Curry level. I mean, we just saw Steph with a 50-point game in a Game 7. Um, another another level that he's been uh, equated to is Kobe or Jordan. I mean, he, up there, Tiger, that sort of competitive level. And he just seems to be such a sweetheart that we don't see the red ass, right, or that sort of competitive um, aspect. Do you got a good story on that where you had to deal with that you, on the sideline, Andy? Yeah. Um, yeah, probably when I told me he had to go get his ankle x-rayed. I mean, he, he about wanted to kill me, but that um, it was pretty red at that time. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, Rich? It, he was upset. Uh, but he's competitive. Uh, you saw him, John, with – one of the players there on the other team and um, I'm going to come after you and all this bit. So he, he, he's competitive, everything he does. He's competitive in practice. He challenges guys. He's competitive with his own guys, with the defensive guys. He, 
he's uh they they play these little games during training camp i mean it could be shooting a small basketball a mini basketball and into a hoop stuck on the door and he wants to win the thing and uh he's just that's how he's wired he grew up in a locker room and that's his life i mean that's how he goes about it catch the rich eisen show every single day on the roku channel 12 to 3 eastern for free 